let's take a second and let's imagine. Imagine coming to school and not having a bed to sleep in the night before. Imagine sleeping on the floor with just a blanket and pillows. Think about not having dinner the night before or breakfast the morning of. Think about how that would affect your mood and how you think in your education. Hi, my name is Amanda Finkenthal and I'm gonna be presenting on poverty and education. So there's a couple of reasons why I do wanna present on this topic and one of those is which, of which is because it is something that I have seen. Um, I am an education major. I have seen kids that are in a lower economic class and because I've seen kids coming tired or hungry the day of and I've seen how that affected their education and how that has affected their mood. Um, it's something that I definitely want to learn more about just because it is something that I'm going to see throughout my life and I feel it is important for me to learn more about because of that. Also, one in five children are in poverty, so it does impact a large amount of the United States. Um, it doesn't always just impact them when it comes to school, it can actually impact them with their relationships and it can impact them post-graduation if they do graduate. Um, when it comes to getting jobs or having the opportunities to go to college. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the impact that poverty on education has. So one of the things that it does impact um, is the limited resources that schools have. So let's take a second and let's think about this. So think about a school that has families that are in the high economic status. Um, think about the resources that they may be provided with, uh, such as white, such as smart boards or a bunch of whiteboards and computers. So these children are provided with a lot of resources that help their quality of education. However, there are school districts that have a have families of lower economic status, and because of that. They may not get the same exact funds that the higher economic families in school districts get. So they might not have the same exact technology or they may not have the books and the resources to get the same quality education that, some, that others do. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you don't know who Maslow is, um, he created this hierarchy of needs to explain a little bit more of how things go with life. So, um, just to explain it and give you a little bit of background, um, and able to reach this need, you, your physiological needs, you need those to be able to reach your safety needs. And you need your safety needs and physiological needs to meet your love and belonging, and that just goes up from there. So, for the first, first part right here, right at the bottom, is your physiological needs, which is your basic needs such as food and water um, and Maslow said that in order to reach the safety needs you have to first meet the physiological needs so if you're not getting those different things such as food and water you're not going to be able to reach safety and so on and so forth so it goes from physiological safety love and belonging self-esteem and then self actualization which is the highest point on the hierarchy of needs So another thing that I want to talk about is the readiness gap. And if you don't know what the readiness gap is, it's when a child comes in and there may be one child that knows 5,000 words and there, want, there might be a child that knows only 100 words and they might be at the same age level, um, but it's the gap between what they know. So just to put a little bit more perspective and give you a better idea of what it is. Um, here's, a little, here's something that says, according to the Center for American Progress, by school entry, the gap between the wealthiest children and the poorest children is already pronounced. Children from low income families are a year or more behind their more advantaged peers. 
By age four, low-income children have heard 30 million fewer words than children from more affluent families and have vocabularies that are half as extensive. So let's so think about that for a second. Children even at age four from a wealthier family may know 30 million more words than a child. They may know they may have heard 30 million more words than a child that is from a lower income family. Um, this gap is not something that typically gets smaller. It is typically something that gets larger as time goes on. Another impact that poverty in education has is it may make a child feel insecure. So a child may feel insecure about their, about their status when it comes to economics and um, they may feel alienated from society because they may feel that they are the only one that is going through the situation even when there are one in five children one in five children that are going through that situation. Um, uh, and they may feel that there is no way to get out of this situation because it's something that we're, they were born into and it's not something that is typically easy to get out of. Now, when I'm talking about the Alliance community, I have found something from the Ohio School Report Card of 2019 that said 100% of the children that go to the Alliance School District is economically disadvantaged. So when I talk about these impacts, just think about how that might affect the community around us and the students that go to the Alliance schools. All right, so now I'm going to play a video for you that gives you a better idea of poverty in education. Poverty to my family is me not having had breakfast that morning or dinner the night before. I'm not going to be able to pay attention it, Pay attention in class. It, it's very basic, um, and I think often we try to get very intellectual about it, but it's just that. Um, I can't pay attention um, if my other needs aren't being met. I want to learn, um, and until my basic needs are met, I'm not going to be prepared to learn. And um, so that's from the student and family perspective. And I think poverty in terms of our schools and the adults in the schools, it's the conditions that, you know, whether it's lack of resources, lack of books, lack of air conditioner, lack of heating. I mean, all of these components have an impact on not just the students learning, but the adults who are in the building as well and their ability. I mean, you sometimes see we talk about chronic absenteeism, but there's adult absenteeism too. And people want a paycheck. They want to be able to deliver in their profession, but if the conditions aren't there, whether physically or even just culturally, where I feel comfortable teaching and supported, then, you know, it's just, it's kind of a two-way street poverty impacts the facility as well as the young people and families coming into that school. And, you know, to me, it's very basic, um, you know, in terms of you need to, I, I don't care if you take a nap in my classroom because you didn't have a bed to sleep in the night before. That's important for me. So then maybe later in the afternoon, you'll be able to pay attention, right? And hopefully I can give you an environment <laughs> where you have a comfortable chair that's not breaking or a floor that's flat and not curved, like in the Detroit public schools, right? I mean, I think it's a travesty that we're expecting our young people to learn in the, the, these types of environments. Um, that's one thing, but then also, I don't want to punish them for not having had breakfast or dinner. And so I, we do believe, we strongly believe, um, you know, personally as well as AFT is, um, we need to address these needs um, before we can do anything else. Right. So now I wanna talk a little bit about ways to combat this issue. So 
So this has been something that has been going on for years. Um, however, there are ways to help with this social justice issue. One in which might be from funding different organizations that specifically support poverty and education. So that would be one way of doing it. Another way is educating people, making people aware of the impact that poverty and education can have. It's not just something that's small, it's something that can really affect a lot of people throughout their entire lives. Um, one other thing that the school districts can do is hire great teachers. It's so important to hire great teachers. You, it's important for the quality of education to have teachers that care and feel, and students that feel like they want to go to school because they have that caring support, yet they have teachers that hold them to the standards and let them know that they have the potential to grow in their education. Another thing is sharing the benefits um, that the government provides. So there are various gov government benefits, such as different health care plans or different ways to get food. And make sure, and doing that, you have to make sure that people are educated and know the resources that can be provided for them. So I want to end with this quote by Julius Nair. It says, education is not a way to escape poverty. It is a way of fighting it. Thank you.